Good morning. Welcome to Let's Get Growing Facebook Live. We're outside on a beautiful spring morning. We've been waiting for this kind of weather after all the rain we've had. So we're up in the garden today. We're gonna look at a few plants that are classified as spring ephemerals. Sometimes you'll hear that term. And basically a spring ephemeral could be a tulip or a daffodil, but there's a lot of other plants that fall into that same category. A spring ephemeral is a plant that comes up, blooms and does its thing, and then disappears back underground for the summer. So a trillium, for example, would fall into that category. Um, we're going to look at a few others that are in bloom right now in the garden. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about layering your perennial border. So we're going to move up the garden here. We're going to have a look first right here at one of my favorite little spring plants, the anemone ranunculoides. So there's lots of different types of anemones. You get the Japanese anemones that are there as a plant all year and then bloom in the summer, late summer and fall. Um, there are other anemones that grow from little tubers, anemone blanda, which are in bloom at this time of the year. And there are also anemones that grow from little stick-like rhizomes. And that's what anemone ranunculoides is. So you can see it's made this beautiful carpet here of really nice foliage and beautiful little buttercup flowers. Now, you know, when you look at this, you may go, oh, that's a lot of plant there. And it's, you know, kind of overtaking. But the nice thing about it is, is that it's going to be up and blooming now. But in a few weeks, you won't even know it was there. Because what happens is, and if you look closely around the edges here a little bit is where they're easier to see at the moment. You can see there are all kinds of new stems, in this case of Solomon seal. There's some variegated Solomon seal even coming out over into the walkway here. There's some Actea, the black leaf coming up at the back there. And also what you're not seeing in here yet is big hostas. So when you're thinking about perennial garden design and planning, think about that spring lid here of Solomon seal and hostas and ferns. There'd be nothing here at this time of the year. It'd just be an empty bed. But by using the spring ephemerals, you get a whole layer of spring color in here that makes the garden beautiful before your bigger plants come up and give you your summer interest. Another one, this guy here, this is a corydalus. So corydalus we see in a lot of different forms. Um, they're mostly bulbous plants. Uh, we have corydalus salida, this little guy here, which carpets the garden um, in the early spring, sort of early April. It's just starting to finish up now. This is Corydalus nobilis. It's a much bigger plant, as you can see, and you can see it behind here, seeding around in a pretty good size area. But again, in a few weeks, these will all be gone, die down for the summer, and in its place will be large hostas, painted ferns, um, and another plant we'll look at as we move up the garden. Nice thing about things like these corydalis, we don't do much to them. We treat them much like bulbs. They come up, they bloom, we let them set seed, the seed scatters, and they just spread around the garden as they like. They're never a nuisance because they're gone before you realize that they're there, more or less. So um, it kind of works out well. In this area of the garden, what comes up after the Corydalus nobilis is our native May apples. So you can see right now as you dot through, you see the juvenile foliage of the May apples there. Well, as the Corydalus dies down, the May apples that are growing in amongst them come up to about this height and again, cover the ground and make a nice ground cover there while the Corydalus all die down. 
So once you get to learn how these spring ephemerals work, they can be really handy plants for early blasts of color where you've got later blooming things. Now I just noticed this guy here. This is actually a really interesting plant that not many people know. This is a native plant. I don't know if you can get that, Laura, after you finish typing there. This is a native plant and it does grow naturally uh, in our garden here. And it's a plant that we're gonna start propagating because it is kind of, uh, might be able to be used as a repl native replacement for things like phylum or Virginia water leaf. It has a very similar leaf to, similar leaf shape to goutweed, but it has little blue flowers, which are not exciting, but it has this great, when you find a good plant, some of them don't have quite the same silver markings, but there are others in the garden that have that wonderful silver variegation on them. So we're going to look into this little guy and see if we can start propagating that uh, as a possible good native uh, ground cover. We need to stop using goutweed. We need to stop using periwinkle. We need to start looking at things like the may apples and the Virginia water leaf. Now the may apples get a little bit aggressive. If you want to cover big areas with them, great. Be careful about putting them near choice things because if you look at these things, you can see how many we have. <laughs> we got lots of them. So they get a little rambunctious, but you can dig them up easily, move them to where you want to be. And if you're just trying to cover bad areas in the garden, it's a good native to do that. So we're going to travel up the garden a little bit here. I'm going to mention this plant here at the moment right now. So we've got these clusters of bright yellow. And if you look on the hill here, you see they're all over the hill. This is Styloforum. Now Styloforum or yellow wood poppy is a really neat plant. It actually is a very, very rare Ontario native plant. Um, it only grows I, that I know of in one small area in Ontario um, natively. These were planted, well, my, these have actually reseeded from uh, one or two clumps that were planted originally. But it's a wonderful splash of yellow now and blooms for quite a long time through the spring. You do need to be careful that you don't mix it up with the uh, celandine poppy, which I can't really show you at the moment. I don't know if I can even find the celandine poppy at the moment. Oh, here's one, I think. Yeah, that's the celandine poppy there. So celandine poppy is another, is a small yellow poppy, but it's a ridiculously invasive. And one way to tell them apart, because they are very similar, if you look at those leaves, they're almost identical. But look at all the hairs on the celandine poppy. And it has that crazy orange sap that gets all over your fingers. The flowers are similar on the plants, but the celandine poppy flowers are smaller. Um, Styloforum also makes a neat, fat seed pod that's hairy. Celandine poppy makes a long, thin, smooth seed pod. Styloform, good. Celandine poppy, bad. Loves the dry shade of this hill, though. And you can see how it's colonizing its way through. So we're coming up around the corner here. To a couple of more spring ephemerals. We have great success in the garden with... Erythronium pagoda. Now we have native erythroniums here in Ontario. We usually see them as a carpet of little mottled leaves. They're called trout lily or, or dog tooth violet. Uh, they're not a huge bloomer, but they're an aggressive spreader in, in native shady areas. Erythronium pagoda is a strong hybrid. It's a great blooming plant. You can see it's just come into bloom here now as these wonderful little recurved lily-like flowers. 
and attractive foliage too it's quite nice but again spring ephemeral so as this clump dies down and disappears for the summer these heucra velosas are going to take over the area and the violets will come back next year at the same time when there's not a lot else going on but it's a terrific plant if you can find it it's planted as a bulb so erythronium pagoda it's probably the most easily available erythronium although it's not always easy to find but it's a beautiful plant we're at a point now in the garden where we can be digging these big clumps and dividing them up so you'll even see i think we might even have some seedlings this one little one here there's a leaf over there that looks like it might be a seedling so you know very worthwhile plant if you can find it in the fall when you get bulbs The other plant we're going to look at here is this one. This is one of my favorite spring ephemerals. This is the Mertensia or Virginia bluebells. And you can see it all dotted through here. When you see the clumps of that oblong leaf that's kind of a bluish green, there's lots of them. It's a wonderful plant. If you can, get a hold of a plant that has been freshly dug and is still growing. Mertensia, like a bulb, dies down after it blooms and seeds um, and is sometimes available as a dry bulb in the spring, but they're very slow to come back from that. So if you can get freshly dug plants, that's what you want. They're much easier to establish if the root hasn't dried out between uh, when it was dug and when it was planted. Now, our colonies now are seeding around. The majority of these are seedlings, and there's lots of them. If you look through, there's lots and lots of seedlings here. But again, first layer. So we've had bulbs in here. We've had, um, what have we had? We've got some snowdrops in here. We've had scillas in here. We've had chionodoxa in here. We have corydalis in here. We have mertensia in here. And then come summer, we're going to have heucras, hostas, ferns. It'll be a whole different look in a, in a few weeks' time, all in this small area of garden. So that's the other thing about the spring ephemerals. If, if Laura just sort of casts her eye over the garden here at the moment, you can see all kinds of life. There's color. There's all kinds of growth of different foliage patterns. Most of what you're seeing here now will be gone in three weeks and a whole different palette of plants are going to be different garden. That's the use of the spring ephemeral. Um, do we have any questions, Laura, yet? Yes. Paula would like to know if you can recommend a moss plant in her stone walkway. A moss plant for a the stone walkway? A moss to plant in a stone well, walkway. To start with, you can go... I'm going to stand up. <laughs> To start with, you can look at sort of the, the, the fake mosses. And by fake mosses, I mean uh, Irish moss and Scotch moss. Um, they're actually arenaria. They are a flowering plant, so they're not a true moss, but they have moss-like foliage. And they can be broken up and cut up into pieces and put into little areas of the garden. Also, we're not in the right spot in the garden for it now, but you can even look, if you have a full sun pathway that has gaps in it, look around in full sun areas and see if you can find mosses growing on rocks and things already that you could maybe take a chunk of and try to get it established between your paving stones. Um, there are an amazing range of mosses in the world and they don't all grow in shady, damp places. We have mosses growing on rockery stones that are baked in the full sun all summer. Um, and just, they come to life when they get a bit of moisture. So look at that. But if you want to start with a flowering plant, look at the Aran areas, the Scotch moss and Irish moss. That's the only question. Only question today? Well, all right. I hope everybody's out enjoying their gardens. Um, there's certainly a lot going on. I know with this warmer weather now, 
is going to start making things really, really jump. So I think we'll probably wrap it up for today. A um, couple of spots left on our Ireland trip. Go to masonhousegardens.com, have a look at that. Uh, Pre-ordering is still open. I'm still adding lots of stuff to the website so you can see what we're going to have on our open days. And our open days start this week. Thursday, Friday, Saturday uh, of this week. What are the dates of that, Laura? We don't let them offhand. Is it 10th, 11th, 12th, something like that? 9th, 10th, 11th, maybe? We'll just confirm that. Thursday, 11th, 12th, 13th. Okay, so May 11th, 12th, 13th, from 10 till 2, we'll have our first open days of the year this week, and we're going to repeat that again next week. So next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, going into the long weekend, we will be open as well, 10 till 2, those three days. There'll be lots of stuff available for sale. We've been propagating and growing like crazy. The greenhouse is full. Other than that, if we've got no more questions, be sure to listen to us on CKDO 1580, 107.7 FM, Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock for the Let's Get Growing radio show. And we'll be back again next week with more Let's Get Growing Facebook Live.